Welcome to the first screencast on biotechnology. This first screencast uh, gives a, a brief introduction into the idea of what biotechnology is and then looks at an example of immobilised enzymes. So dealing with a general introduction, first of all, to biotechnology, biotechnology is very simply the use of living organisms or parts of living organisms in industry. Okay, this could be in food production, drug production, uh, it could be in diagnostics, by which I mean uh, detecting the presence of chemicals, uh, and there can be a whole range of um, reasons why we might um, use organisms in industry. And biotechnology, we tend to think of organisms being some form of microorganisms, uh, some bacteria, fungi, etc. Okay, uh, in terms of what we're going to look at in this slide, we're going to be looking at the example of enzymes. Okay, so enzymes fits our definition of biotechnology because it's parts of living organisms. Okay, so the use of parts of living organisms, and obviously enzymes are parts of living organisms. Okay, so we can study uh, enzymes uh, because we use enzymes in industry. Okay, and why are enzymes such a powerful tool in industry? There are a number of reasons. Um, primarily, they operate at low temperatures, okay, and compared to um, traditional uh, chemical industrial processes, which tended to require high temperatures, high pressures, perhaps expensive catalysts, uh, enzymes we can find do a lot of um, chemical processes at very low temperatures. And the advantage for this is it reduced energy costs if you don't have to heat or put your um, reaction mixture under high pressure um, you don't have the cost of, of the temperature and the pressure to consider okay the um, one of the other advantages of enzymes in industry is the idea of specificity remember enzymes are specific ie they have specifically shaped active sites uh, which react with specific substrates which produ produce specific products, okay, uh, and this is very useful because it means that uh, if you've got some industrial process, there's going to be very few contaminants because the enzymes produce very specific products, okay, and they react with very specific substrates, okay, so we can encourage precisely the, the chemical reaction we want to be happening in our um, reaction vessel, okay. And in terms of just another piece of revision for enzymes for you, from what you can remember about enzymes, there are two types of enzymes. That we've got intracellular and extracellular. Now, extracellular are by far the easiest enzymes to use in biotechnology because they're already secreted from the cell and are therefore quite easy to isolate. Intracellular enzymes, however, provide biotechnology with more difficulty because it has to break open the cell and then isolate the enzyme from within the cell, which can actually be um, quite uh, difficult and uh, quite expensive too. Okay, so those are sort of uh, all the advantages of using enzymes in industry, but one of the key problems of using enzymes in industry is if you have a normal enzyme reaction, an enzyme is in solution with its substrate uh, and then the, turns the substrate into a product and then that product is also in solution with the um, the enzyme okay so to get the um, the product we have to then isolate or separate the enzyme from the product and that can be very costly too okay so this brings us to the what the, the reason for this particular slide is the idea of immobilized enzymes okay and so as i said the problem with using enzymes in injury is is that enzyme is mixed with product and therefore difficult and expensive to separate as i've said there okay immobilizing enzymes is the answer and what we do is we simply bind our enzyme to some sort of inert and insoluble substance Okay, so we, we can put that inert and soluble substance into our, uh, our substrate, and the substrate binds to the enzyme, which is attached to the inert substance, produces the product, and once the reaction's over, we can somehow just remove the enzyme, which is attached to our inert substance. Okay, now, 
So the immobilizing is essentially attaching an enzyme to some form of inert substance. And there are a number of ways in which this can be done. And I've got a selection of these ways here. Adsorption, notice adsorption, not absorption, but adsorption means attached to the surface of something. Uh, we can also bind it with covalent bonds. Entrapment, which we'll look at, and also membrane separation. Okay, so these are the four ways in which you need to know how we can immobilize an enzyme. And immobilize an enzyme means we bind that enzyme to some inert and insoluble substance. Okay, so just moving down to illustrate some of that with a picture. Okay, so here I've got different ways in which we can bind our enzyme to a particular uh, inert substance. Okay, so these structures here represent some inert substance. Okay, so the first thing we can do is a process called adsorption. And adsorption is when the enzyme attaches to our inert substance by some relatively weak chemical bond. In this case here, that we can see the inert substance is slightly positively charged and our enzyme is slightly negatively charged. So there's an attraction there and these enzymes will stick to the surface of our insoluble inert material. Okay, And that's called adsorption. It doesn't have to be little ionic interactions. It could be hydrophobic interactions which you came across when we looked at um, protein structure. Hydrophobic interactions between the enzyme and this porous uh, sorry, this um, inert, insoluble substance. Okay. The next example, B here, okay, is a covalently bound enzyme. So this enzyme is immobilized, being by covalently bound, bonded to this inert substance. Okay. And uh, so that's slightly different for that. And these are very, very permanent covalent bonds that hold the enzyme to the substrate. Okay, and the next one is this structure here. Okay, and this is an example of what we call entrapment. Okay, so essentially enzymes are entrapped in cellulose network or gel beads. Okay, and the subrate needs to be able to permeate the entrapping material and therefore um, the rates tend to be slightly reduced in this case uh, because it's quite difficult for the substrate to actually get at the enzyme. You still can get at the enzyme, but it's not going to be as rapid as other mechanisms. Okay, so here we this is entrapment. Okay, so we've got some matrix of some inert, insoluble substance. It'll be cellulose, all sorts of things. And we have our enzyme which is trapped, or enzymes which are trapped in this meshwork of, of fibres in this case. So that's known as entrapment. And then lastly, on this slide, we have membrane separation. When we have our enzyme, which is um, sequestered in some sort of membrane, and therefore the substance, the substrate has to diffuse through the membrane, it reacts with the enzyme, and then the product diffuses out of the membrane. Okay, so the enzyme se separated from substrate by a membrane. Substances permeate membrane, but the enzyme can't because the membrane is too big. Reaction proceeds, and then the pro products permeates back out through the membrane. Okay, so we've got substrates moving in through our membrane, reacting with our immobilized enzyme, and then the product moving out. Okay, so that um, covers our slide on how enzymes can be immobilized. Remember, absor adsorption, things like ionic or hydrophobic bonds, quite uh, weak bonds between the enzyme and our inert substance. Our covalent bond, a more permanent structure. Entrapment, when the enzymes are trapped within a meshwork of some form of inert insoluble substance. And then membrane separation, when we actually use a phospholipid bilayer through which Substrates have to permeate, react with enzyme, and the products then diffuse out through the membrane. Okay, and 
moving to the next slide. So this next slide looks at um, advantages and disadvantages of using immobilized enzymes in large-scale productions or in industrial processes. And the first thing is that if we uh, have our enzymes attached to our inert and insoluble substance, they're very, very easily to very easy to separate from our product. Okay, therefore you have reduced purification costs. Okay, you can you can in theory just lift your enzyme out of your reaction mixture, uh, and so you've reduced it. Uh, so you've got separated it from its product. Okay, it also means that the enzyme can be very easily reused. Okay, so sometimes the purification. Uh, process which reduce which uh, separated enzymes from products actually ended up denaturing the enzyme. But in this case, because the enzyme is so easily, easily uh, removed, it can very uh, quickly be reused in another reaction vessel. Okay, again, which reduced costs. Okay, and the other um, the other advantage of using um, and or immobilizing enzymes is that what we find is that they tend to be more resistant to being denatured. Okay, and the term that we give for that is we say they've got greater thermostability. Okay, so that means it can operate, um, enzymes can operate at higher temperatures, and a very good um, way of illustrating that, if you could imagine. A, a protein structure like this and as we know if we heat this protein structure what happens is that the if you heat this the bonds get broken uh, things like the ionic bonds the hydrophobic interactions and so on get broken and the tertiary structure of this protein disintegrates and the three-dimensional structure changes and the active site changes and it no longer binds to the substrate. We, and, and the word denatured is used to describe what I've, what I've just explained. Okay? If, however, we have this structure, so I've got a very similar, simple protein structure, it's basically the same as that, um, and we bind this to by big covalent bonds to our inert substance, okay, so these red lines are representing some sort of covalent bond, what we find is that these covalent bonds that we've created between the enzyme and our inert substance create a rigidity in the three-dimensional structure of this enzyme. Okay? And that rigidity um, resists the change of shape that this would have if you heated it up. Okay? So this enzyme over here, which isn't immobilized, would denature at quite low temperatures, okay? whereas it would take a considerably high temperature to cause the denaturing of this enzyme here. Okay? And the word that we use to describe that is thermo. Stable, thermostable. Okay, so those are um, advantages. Okay, and actually going back to why you might ask, why is it an advantage to have thermostability? Why is it an advantage to have our enzymes operating at higher temperatures? The reason being that if they can operate at higher temperatures, the rates of reaction will be greater. And also, if it's uh, some sort of food process, what we can find if we do it at a higher temperature is that that can kill bacteria. Okay, And it can also reduce the viscosity of our substrate mixtures, which makes the whole process a lot easier. Okay, But it can also um, kill unwanted bacteria if we can do our enzyme reaction, let's say, at 80 degrees centigrade rather than 
40 degrees centigrade for this enzyme over here. Okay, so remember this word thermostable. Okay, so immobilized enzymes tend to be more thermostable than non immobilized enzymes. And here's just a couple of disadvantages. The whole immobilization process can be quite costly. Okay, and the other thing about this is catalysis can be actually slower than enzymes which are free in solution. Okay, and I'll illustrate why that is. So going back to my two enzymes here, this enzyme is soluble in water, okay, and it can move around in our water uh, and it can collide with substrate molecules, okay. This enzyme here is stuck to this insoluble substrate, oh sorry, not substrate, the wrong word, this insoluble substance, okay. Consequently, this molecule is stationary, it doesn't have any kinetic energy, can't move around, okay, and therefore it's less likely to collide with substrate molecules compared to this which is moving around so the collision rate would be much higher and therefore more product would be formed. Collision rate here slower and therefore less product formed. Okay. So that finishes our look at immobilized enzymes.